Hello grade 10s, in this video we'll be looking at an analytical geometry past paper question. I have more like this, check out the links in the description box below and please consider subscribing to my channel, it really helps me, your support means the world to me and I can't wait to see you in more videos in the future. Let's jump right in to this question. We'll be answering all of this so please don't go anywhere. They give me a diagram and they give me D. E and F and they say that there are three points in the Cartesian plane just take note that F if this is a coordinate the X part of the coordinate is there negative one but the Y part of the coordinate is missing we're obviously gonna have to find that at some point right let's jump right in to the questions starting off with calculate the length of D E now in order to calculate the length of a line D E we're going to use the distance formula so I've written out the distance formula. I've rewritten my coordinates so that they are nice and big so that you can see them. I'm going to call this coordinate number one and this one number two. It really doesn't matter. This is X and Y. This is X and Y. So my distance formula says I'm going to do the square root of X2. So this is X of coordinate number two. So three minus X1, negative three. And we're going to square that plus y2, which is negative 5, minus y1, which is 3. And we're going to square that. So essentially what I have is 3, and then this is plus 3, so I've got 6 squared, and I've got plus negative 8 squared, and that gives me 10. So there we go, that's my final answer. You'll get a mark for your answer, and you'll get a mark for substituting into the distance formula. My next question says calculate the gradient of DE. So we're looking at the same straight line, the same two coordinates. Now we're just calculating gradient. So first of all, you should know that gradient is represented by the letter M. And you should know that the gradient formula is as follows. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let's rewrite those coordinates for you. There we go. So now we take y2. So this is x, this is y. So y of the second, so minus 5, minus y of the first. So it's minus 5, minus 3, over 3, minus, minus 3. It's very important to note that the gradient formula says we must minus. And in this case, x1 is a negative. So it's minus, minus. Negative 4 over 3 is your answer for gradients. Once again, you get a mark for substituting into your formula and then for your correct answer. Now here's a little bit of a more challenging question. We want you to determine the value of k. And now remember, point F has a coordinate of negative 1 and k. So k is the y part of the coordinate F. So determine the value of k if angle DEF is 90. Now, D E F. So follow D E F. That's this angle over here. I'm telling you that that angle is 90. Now, when we do Euclidean geometry and you think of lines meeting at 90 degrees or lines meeting perpendicularly, 90 degrees, what you need to remember is that if this is true, if this angle here is 90, if they meet at 90, it means that the gradient of line D E multiplied by the gradient of line EF. When I multiply those two gradients together, what should it get me? L multiplied by line EF, it should get me negative 1. That is just something that you need to know. If the gradients, or if the lines meet perpendicularly, so at 90 degrees, if you multiply the gradients together, it gives you negative 1. So that information is going to be so, so val valuable when I'm calculating K. So what we already know, if you can remember from the previous question, is we already know the gradient of line DE or ED. So what we already know in this thing that I just drew here, we already know this one. So the gradient of line DE, remember, was negative 4 over 3. If I multiply that by the gradient of line EF, that should give me negative 1. If you rearrange that equation, the gradient of EF ends up being 3 over 4. If you don't know how to do that, it is, this is times negative 4 over 3. So you're going to say negative 1 divided by negative 4 over 3. You basically do the reciprocal like that, and then it's the opposite sign. Okay, so reciprocal, you tip it, and opposite sign. So we now know the gradient of line EF. 
What I also know is the gradient formula. So the gradient formula is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the gradient. Right, now, what we have is the gradient of EF, and we know it's 3 over 4. So in the place of M, I'm going to put 3 over 4. Then I'm going to look at coordinate E, and I'm going to look at coordinate F. Okay, let's write out what we know of these coordinates. E is 3 and negative 5. F is minus 1 and K. Okay, so... In the place of y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, I'm going to be filling in using these coordinates. So let's call this one number one, this one number two. Remember, this is x, y, x, y. So what I'm going to do is y2 is, if you go to y2, it's k. Okay, so instead of y2, I'm going to fill in k. Minus y1 y1 is negative 5, so we go minus, minus 5, or minus, negative 5. Okay, now looking at the x's, x2 is negative 1, so negative 1, minus, there's the minus from the formula, minus, x1, which is 3. I hope you're following me, so I'm just filling into the gradient formula. Remember, my goal is to find k. So I know what the gradient is equal to, and I know what I can fill in so far from my gradient formula. Now I just solve. Okay, so 3 over 4, I've got k plus 5 at the top, and at the bottom I've got minus 1 minus 3, which is minus 4. How do I solve for k? Now it's very sad when people do the analytical geometry part of the question correct. So they fill in all of this, and then they do the algebra wrong. So let's go through the algebra nice and carefully. Different ways to do this. One way would be to cross multiply. So you multiply those two together and then you multiply these two together. Or what you could do is as follows. This over here on this side is divide by negative 4. What's the opposite of divide by negative 4? Times negative 4. So you say 3 over 4 times negative 4 and you're left with k plus 5 on this side. And then still k is not by itself. We've got plus 5 on this side. Opposite or inverse operations is minus. So we say minus 3 minus 5. So k is equal to negative 8. If you want to do the cross multiply method, remember the following. So you go 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Then if you go 4 times k plus 5, you must say 4 times k is 4k. And 4 times 5 is 20. You have to multiply both of these by 4. So we've got 4k equals negative 12 minus 20 and we got 4k equals negative 32 and therefore k is equal to negative 32 divided by 4 which again gives me negative 8. So where do you get your marks? You get your marks for figuring out that the gradient of EF is 3 over 4. Then you get your marks for substituting into the equation correctly you get a mark for some sort of simplification while solving, and then a mark for your final answer. 3.1.4 says if k is negative 8, so they're giving me the value of k in case you couldn't calculate it. Determine the coordinates of m, the midpoint of df. Now, I know that you don't see a line df, but essentially they are saying that if d and f were connected like this, and we had coordinate m over here. What is this midpoint over here? So you need to use the midpoint formula. So what I've done is I've written out the midpoint formula. I've also written out the coordinates d and f. I've labeled d number one, f number two. So that's x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's fill in our midpoint formula. So x2 is this one over here, negative one, plus x1, which is negative three divided by 2, then y2 is negative 8, plus y1, which is 3, divided by 2, simplify each little fraction, so we've got negative 1 plus 3, so that is 2, divided by 2, which is 1, and negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5, divided by 2, which is negative 5 over 2, that is my midpoint. And I just realized over here, this is why it's very important to look carefully when you do this. x1, x2 is negative 1, so that's right, plus 
x1 is negative 3. That's very important. Okay, so just so that we don't make mistakes, you need to do it slowly. So it's x2, which is negative 1, plus x1, which is negative 3. Like that. So it's actually negative 1 plus negative 3, which is negative 4, divided by 2, which is negative 2. But my second fraction was still correct. There we go. Just remember to do it slowly. Check that you substitute incorrectly. See, everybody makes mistakes, and it's okay. But that's why we go slowly, number 1, and why we check our work, number 2. 3.1.5 says determine the coordinates of a point G, which is obviously not there. G, such that quadrilateral D. E, F, G is a rectangle. Okay, so what they're telling me is they want us to find the coordinate of a point, which will probably be somewhere over here, and we're going to call that G. And they say that that will be G in such a way that D, E, F, G is a rectangle. Now, lots of different ways to do this. I'll show you two methods. Now, it is always good to remind yourself of the properties of a rectangle, which I've put over here for you. It is useful to note that the opposite sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles equal, diagonals bisect each other, diagonals are equal in length. This is a useful piece of information because what it means is that if I have the two diagonals over here, and let's say this is the midpoint over here of one of my diagonals, that means that the diagonal is bisected in length, so this length of this is equal to this length of this. It also means that this midpoint over here is also the midpoint of the other diagonal, such that this and this, those are equal in length. So what I can do over here is I know that one of my diagonals over here, diagonal DF, we found out the midpoint of that diagonal in the previous question. Now that midpoint will also be the midpoint of this diagonal, G, E, or E, G. The midpoint will be the same, okay? So I can use the fact that I know this midpoint of E, G to help me figure out the coordinates of G. That's one way to do it. That's the way that I'll start with. So I've just written my reasoning over here for you to look at, for you to go through. Remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the coordinates of G. Right, so I've written that there. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that G has the coordinates of X and Y. Essentially, what I'm looking for is X and Y. So what I've done is I've written the midpoint formula and I've written my two coordinates. Now remember, M is the midpoint. And M, as we figured out earlier, was equal to negative 2 and negative 5 over 2. And that is equal to x2, so e and g, remember m is the midpoint of e and g, so e I've called number 1, g I've called number 2, so x2, so x, plus x1, 3, over 2, put semicolon, y2, which is y, plus y1, which is negative 5, remember to substitute in properly, divided by 2. Now, what we all we need to do from this point onwards is remember, this is the formula to work out midpoint. And I know what the midpoint is equal to. This is the x coordinate of the midpoint. This is the y coordinate of the midpoint. This is the little formula to help me figure out the x coordinate of the midpoint. This is the little formula to help me figure out the y coordinate of the midpoint. So all I need to do now is I need to take each little formula or fraction and make it equal to its answer. So for example, we will do this. x plus 3 over 2 is equal to negative 2. I know that the x part of my coordinate is negative 2. It says it right over here. And this is the little formula used to work it out. So this is how you do it. This is divide by 2. We take it over. It becomes times by 2. So we go negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. And then x plus 3. x, the opposite of plus 3, is minus 3. So it's minus 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. Then we do the same thing, but we do it for the y part of the coordinates. So we know that this is the formula y minus 5 over 2 equals, we know what it should equal, negative 5 over 2. So this is divide by 2 on this side. I'm going to take it over. It's going to become multiply by 2. So negative 5 over 2 multiplied by 2 is negative 5. Y minus 5 
this is minus 5, inverse operations will be plus 5. So negative 5 plus 5, y is 0. So there we go. We figured out our x, we figured out our y. Therefore, coordinate g is negative 7 in the x position and 0 in the y position. There is another way to do this. And the next way might be my preferred way. So I'll show you. I'll try and explain it the best way I can. Basically, the translation, how we moved or how we shifted e to get to f must be the same translation that we need to apply to d to make it get to g. Okay, so how we move e to get to f must be the same as how we move d to get to g. Now, if you think of e, e is 3 and negative 5. And if you think of f, f is negative 1. And remember, they told us that k is negative 8 if we didn't figure it out correctly. What you need to do for me is you need to see how did I get my x's to go from 3 to negative 1. Okay, whatever I did there, I must do the same to g, to d, to get it to become g. Let's see if you can figure out what I'm saying. So, e to f, how do you get 3? to become negative 1. How many units do we move by? How many units do we move? So 3, to get to negative 1, we move by 4 units to the left. Okay, so that means D, to get to G, we need to use 4, we need to move 4 units to the left. So how are we going to do that? Remember this at the moment is my unknowns. So when we go 4 units to the left, we go negative 3 minus 4. And that makes sense because then negative 3 minus 4, that will ultimately get me the value of g, the x value of g as being negative 7, negative 3 minus 4. Let's see if the next one makes sense. What we do to the y coordinate here to get from e to f will be the same from d to g. So how, what do we do to get from negative 5 to negative 8? We move 3 units down. Okay, we subtract 3 units. So that means for D, we also need to subtract 3 units. Remember, D was originally 3, so 3 minus 3. What's 3 minus 3? 0. There we go. So that is as easy as it is. Just as we did, how did I get from E to F? Whatever I did will be the same to get from D to G. You could do it like this. How do I get from E to D? That will be the same that I need to do to get from F to G, okay, because we're dealing with a rectangle. So you could ask yourself, what translations did I apply to move from E over here to D, then apply the same translations from F, and you will land up at G. And the memo actually does the exact same thing that I just explained to you now. So my first method I put over there, this is the second way over here. My next question says C is a point 1 and negative 2. So if we draw a Cartesian plane, C is the point 1. Remember, that's the X. This is the Y. So 1, negative 2 would be somewhere over here. That is C, 1, and negative 2. And D lies in the second quadrant. Remember, this is quadrant number 1. This is quadrant number 2. And then it goes 3 and 4. So D lies in the second quadrant. So somewhere here. And it has coordinates of x and 5. So that would be, let's say, somewhere over here. x and 5, that is d. If the length of cd is square root 53 units, calculate the value of x. So we're looking for one part of my coordinate. So they're saying if the length of this line, if the distance of that line is 53, square root 53 units, they want me, want me to calculate x. So it's very clear that we need to start here using the distance formula because they're giving me the length of the line. So I know this length, I know this distance. So what I've done is I have written out the distance formula and now I'm going to substitute. So we know that C is 1 and negative 2. We know that D is X and 5. Let's say that this one is number 1 and this one is number 2. X 1, Y 1, X 2, Y 2. So square root X 2. I don't know what it is, so x minus x1 minus 1. Square that. y2, 
5 minus y1, and y1 is negative 2, so minus minus, we square root, we square that, sorry. Let's simplify. So, so far what I have is x minus 1 squared, and then I have plus, what is happening here? It is 5 plus 2 squared. 5 plus 2 is 7 squared. Right, now, we need to solve. The rest of this is plain and pure algebra. So, what I'm going to do is, you see that I'm square rooting on both sides. It's a square root of 53 and the square root of all of this. If you square on both sides of the equation, you cancel out the root. I hope you know that if you root and square root, those essentially cancel each other out. Okay, it's basically like, and you do this more in grade 11, although you have learned that this year, a square root this is, remember, because it's a square root, little invisible 2 over here, we write it in the form of 2 divided by 2, so it's x, okay? So it's this divided by this. You should know that from your exponents. So essentially, I mean, in short, what I'm trying to say is that if I square root, if we square a square root, it cancels out. So I square both sides, we left with 53 on the one side, and we left with x minus 1 squared plus 7 squared, which is 49, Let's carry on in the next page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this bracket out. Remember, it's x minus 1 squared, and some of my grade 10 still make this mistake. It's x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. We need to distribute properly. We essentially do what we some, some teachers call FOIL. So basically, it's like this. If I have to do it the long way, which you absolutely don't need to do, I just want to show you so you can do it properly. It is x times x, which is x squared. It is x times minus 1, which is minus x. Minus 1 times x, which is minus x. Minus 1 times minus 1, which is plus 1. Carry down the plus 49. I hope that this is screaming to you that you need to get this into standard form. You need to make it equal to 0. As soon as I see x squared, I need to think, get it into standard form. So what do I mean by standard form? x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 49 minus 53. We take that over. It was plus 53. It becomes minus 53. This is equal to 0. I can obviously simplify further. Plus 1 plus 49 minus 53 is negative 3. And then we need to factorize. So I hope you know that we are going to do trinomials. Two brackets. The factors or the products of 3, 1 times 3, we're trying to make the middle term, which is minus 2. So I have, let's see, negative, negative 3 and a positive 1. So negative 3 plus 1 gives me negative 2, which is what I need in the middle term. And negative 3 multiplied by positive 1 gives me negative 3, which I need in the last term. If you need help with trinomials, check out the algebra videos. So in my one bracket, I'm going to have minus 3. In my other bracket, I'm going to have plus 1. That's equal to 0. And you should know that this is a quadratic equation. You take each bracket, make it equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0. Or x plus 1 equals 0. So x is positive 3 or x is negative 1. I've got two solutions, which makes sense because I had the x squared over there. It's quadratic. But you need to decide which one makes sense for our answer. So remember, in the beginning, we drew the little Cartesian plane like here. And we said that d was in the second quadrant, which means it's in this quadrant over here. And it has the coordinates of x and 5. So that if I write that a bit bigger x and 5. This is the x part of the coordinate. This is the y part of the coordinate. It makes sense that the y is positive because if you are in the second quadrant, which is up here, these are all positive values for y. The x, remember we're in the second quadrant, so the x values over here are going to be negative. The x values over here for this part of the Cartesian plane are going to be negative, which means that it does not make sense for that to be our answer. It makes sense for our answer to be x is equal to negative 1. So you actually, you do need to exclude 3 as an answer in when you do your answer in your paper. You have to make it clear that x cannot equal 3 because d is in the second quadrant. Therefore, x can only equal negative 1. So this is basically what your memo would look like 
in a question like this, you can see over here that you have to exclude the incorrect answer. D is in the second quadrant, so only x is equal to negative 1 is the valid answer. I hope that this has been a helpful past paper. Please check out the links in the description box below for more papers like this, for more questions like this, and other mass videos. Can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.